Hello, pilots of the internet. Welcome to Foldable Flight. My name is Kyle, and this is where I teach you how to fold paper airplanes that will blow your mind. And today we are asking an important question. Is this the coolest paper airplane ever? Now, if you're not initially impressed, let me point out two quick things for you. First, you might notice there is no center crease, which is kind of a cool thing in itself. And then there's also no fuselage, which makes it really aerodynamic. But that's not even what I'm talking about when I ask, is this the coolest paper airplane ever? What I am talking about is the design that I've printed on it. Now before I show you what that printed design looks like, let me give you a rundown on this plane folded out of regular red Astro Brights paper. And I think it even looks really good just folded out of this. That missing center crease is really kind of a dramatic statement. It's dramatic in how it's understated really. And it's just beautiful, I think. I really look at paper airplanes as being functional sculpture. And this one really kind of just ticks all the boxes for me and what I like in a paper airplane. But as I kind of stated before, I really think it's the printed design that sets it apart. Now, if you don't know, I make a printed foldable template for all the planes that I post to YouTube. And if you support me on patreon.com slash foldable flight, you can download those templates and fold your planes using that paper. So let's look at what Reaper, the name of this plane, looks like when folded out of the Patreon template. And look at that baby. I'm just so proud of the way this one turned out. If you've folded some of my planes before, you might recognize that this looks kind of similar to Silex Drone. And in my mind, it's kind of made by the same company, the same uh, evil corporation. And I just really think that there's some really dynamic lines in here. It really adds a lot to the appearance of this plane. And I think this is my favorite template yet. So if this isn't the coolest paper airplane you have ever seen, I'm not going to be offended, but it is the coolest paper airplane that I have ever made, in my own opinion. So let's see it in flight. Now all you'll need in order to fold Reaper is an 8.5 by 11 inch sheet of paper. And I'm using 24 pound Astro Brights paper, that's what I tend to use for my paper airplanes. It's just a little bit thicker, a little bit heavier, gives your plane some mass to help it fly farther. Uh, but if you use any kind of copy printer paper, you'll be fine. And we're going to begin by performing the water bomb base, and we start by taking this top edge here to the left edge. Now I will warn you this is an advanced model, so I'll leave a card in the top right corner. If you're interested in folding some easier planes, you can click that card and it will take you away from this video and to some of my other videos that will be easier to fold. Because this one, this one will lose some people along the way, I think. But if you're brave enough to stick it out, give it a try. Let's get to it. And we'll open that up, and now we're actually going to do the same thing on the other side, taking this top edge to this edge here. And you really want your crease to go straight through that corner. If you don't get these creases straight through that corner, you're going to have a lot of trouble folding this plane accurately. And you can see this edge landed right on that edge below it. And I'll open that up. And now I will flip this over. And I want to make a crease that goes straight through this intersection here. 
and I'm going to do that by taking this top edge down and you can see I have kind of a triangle of creases here right where those two diagonals meet that's where I want my crease to be so I'm just going to tack it in the center and then line up my outer edges and crease across that top edge and I'll open that back up and flip it over and now all I do is poke that point there and you can see those edges come in and now I can pull the whole thing in like so and I have now performed the water bomb base and hopefully you have managed to do the same the next step is to flip one of our flaps the right one in the opposite direction to the left and now I'm going to take this edge here and fold it so it lands right where our center crease would be and you can see from this edge we do have a center crease so basically I want to land this corner right at that point and this corner on the bottom edge so you'll see I'll pull this in like so and I line this corner up right at that point where this crease intersects the bottom edge of this layer and then once I've found that point I want to make sure that this corner is landing on this edge here and I will open that up and now we're going to do a little trick here where we kind of stick our thumb into this pocket and we want to reverse this crease right here so it was a valley crease we want to turn that into a mountain crease and kind of simultaneously close this pocket using this crease here as a hinge and it should look like that. Now we're going to do another move where we open this whole thing up and we want to reverse this crease again as well as this crease here and what that will do as I reverse that crease and kind of push on this one and push it all in like so your plane should look like this so we're kind of swinging on this hinge again and reversing this crease and this crease to make it all go under. And I'm going to rotate this so that this point is facing me. This is kind of just a preference. And now I want to open this layer up and you'll see it will naturally want to break and form a crease that originates right from that corner. And what we want to do is we want to land this point here on the nose of our plane. And once we've done that, we can hold that with our left hand and swing it here. We want to open this pull pocket up. And we'll crease, making sure we still have this corner on the nose. We'll crease just by pushing our finger into that pocket, like so. So now we should have a straight crease that runs all the way across, like so. And once we've done that, we can flatten the layers to look like this. Okay, having done that, I now want to make a crease that goes from the nose of the plane here to this corner right here. And I'm going to do that by pulling this layer back towards me. And the tricky thing is going to be this section right here, getting it to gently go to that edge without buckling and wrinkling can be a little bit tricky but once you kind of get that you're going to just swing this and you'll see it'll catch near that corner and you can kind of just tack it down like so and then pull the whole thing tight and crease across it And hopefully you got a nice straight crease. I know that's a little bit tricky. And now we will flip this flap back to the right. And we'll do all of those steps on the left side. So now we're flipping our left flap to the right. Taking this corner here to that point right where it intersects the center crease. And this corner will land on our bottom edge.
and we'll open that up. And next we want to reverse this crease. And as we pull that open, we'll swing this whole thing on that crease there and lay it flat like so. We want to open that back up and now that we've established this crease, we are reversing it. Kind of, I like to put my finger right behind the inside of that crease so I can just push down and it's pretty easy to reverse. And then as it starts to reverse, I'll swing in on that crease again and tuck all the layers behind. And our next step is to put this corner onto that corner. And as we do that, it should want to break naturally right along here. And you can see it's kind of a bit of a mess in there. I'm just going to take a second and pull these layers open and realign that right on the corner or on the point of the plane and crease in just by running my finger in like so. And then I can flatten the whole thing so that this edge here is landing on our center crease and it should take this shape. Okay, and next we are making a crease from this point to this corner. And we are on to the next step. So now I want to fold these layers here, this portion, over this edge. So this edge represents where I want to make my crease. And I'm going to pull it up just like so and crease it right over that edge. And we'll flip the flaps over to this side and do the same thing here. Okay, and now while we have it like so, I'm going to actually fold right along this existing crease and take two layers, so I'm just working on what is the right flap here, and fold it in like so. And then after I've done that, I'm going to open this whole thing up, and we want to reverse this spine right here. So as I open up here, I'll push in right there, you can see that crease will land right along this horizontal edge. And then I can close the whole thing up like so. And you can see this flap now will be free like so. And I'm actually going to push that up to the front and then put it back. Really, I just want this crease because that's going to be a reference to us in just a moment. I'll flip to the other side and do the same thing. So here I am using this crease and folding in. And then I'll open that up, swing this open, push in. Now you can see this flap is free. I'll swing it forward. And then swing it back down. So now we're going to make use of that reference in just a moment. The first step is we want to make a crease from the point of the plane to right there where this layer is intersecting that edge. And we're just doing it on these this one left, our left flap here. So you'll see, let me show you, I'll fold it, then you copy me. You can see what I folded here. This crease runs right into that edge and continues at the same angle. That's exactly what you want to do. And then we're going to make a crease from this point here to the point here where this line that we just made intersects the crease that we're using as a reference. So that is the point we're folding to. And again, we're grabbing both 
of these layers here on the left side. So we want the crease to go right to that corner and to that point. And now we will fold in on both of these diagonal creases we've made simultaneously. And this is called a rabbit ear fold because of the resulting rabbit ear is what this is actually called in origami. And that will stand up like that and we're just actually going to push it down like so. And you'll see what we've done here is we've made this so it fits within the profile of our plane and actually it fits into this pocket right here. So that is where we are aiming and now we want to tuck this in. Oh, I had it, there we go, right into that. And then we'll do the same steps on this other side. So now I'm going to flip this to the left, fold it so that it goes from this point here to that point right there. Do the same thing here, folding from this point to the intersection right there. And now I'm going to fold in on both diagonals. and push it flat like so. And now I can tuck this whole portion into this pocket over here. And we are just about done. So I like to run my fingers right over this section because there are some creases that are good to reinforce. You can see my plane lies really nice and flat at this point. All the layers want to hug in a tight profile so that from this angle it really will glide through the air. And now all that's left to do is fold winglets on each side. This is a little bit tricky because you don't have any real reference except that you want this corner to land on this line here. And your objective is to make the crease parallel to that line, but that's going to be up to your eyeball because you don't really have any specific way of measuring that easily without some more complicated procedures using a ruler or something. But getting that crease parallel to that line there will really help because that's going to be parallel to the direction of travel which will do the most to aid in keeping your plane flying straight. You can see I'm kind of uh, I'm moving this corner to this line and I'm not completely making a hard crease. I make a soft crease and then I judge, okay, is that about parallel? And I make slight adjustments as I make the final crease to try to get it as close to parallel as possible. And you guys can kind of judge my work. I think I did okay here. So this is a finished Reaper. And you can see, I love the way that this plane looks. Even, even if it's a little bit simple by some standards, in some ways those are my favorite planes, the planes that really are elegant and deny the kind of stereotypes or the the archetypes of paper airplanes. Like this not having a center crease, I just think is so beautiful. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this plane. I hope it flies well for you. You may need to add a little up elevator on the back by curling the back edges up just slightly, but give it some throws first before you do. Um, in order to throw it, you're just going to grab one wing. So that might be a question you have, right? You can't hold it here. You're just going to grab one wing and throw it side -armed. Now, if you release it level to the ground, it'll swoop up 
like you saw in the video. And if you release it sideways, like this, to the ground, you're going to have some trouble. It'll dive into the ground rather than swooping up. But you can throw it level like this, so you're going to have to throw it sidearm. Or you can aim up into the air, and that'll give you a bit more forgiveness in terms of how the plane will fly, because it'll have more space to recover before it hits the ground. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this fold. As always, thank you for watching. If you're interested in subscribing, click that channel icon in the top right corner. I've got a lot of awesome paper airplane content for you. And if you are interested in supporting me on Patreon, head over to patreon.com foldableflight. And as always, you can watch some more of my content here. Have a good one.